Episode 34. Can we talk? Welcome back to One Extraordinary Marriage, where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of intimacy. You're here with Elisa DiLorenzo. And Tony DiLorenzo. And tonight we're going to be continuing our online small group, working through our book, Strip Down, 13 Keys to Unlocking Intimacy in Your Marriage. Hopefully you guys are stripping down. Absolutely. having a good time this summer. You've uh, picked up a copy of the book, whether it's a physical copy or the ebook, um, Or okay, the audio. Or the audio book. Um, we were actually interviewed earlier today um, from Brent Green. Brent Green, and he listened to our audiobook in one sitting while he was driving across Nebraska. I think he said Kansas, Kansas, Nebraska, Nebraska somewhere, somewhere there in, in central, the Midwest, central United States. Um, and so it was nice to get the feedback from him on listening to the audiobook, and um, we're hearing a lot of great feedback from those of you that have picked it up. And so we thank you. Very um, much so. On that, and there are a number of comments. If you haven't picked up the book yet, Tony's got a number of comments and video uh, comments on the website yep. at oneextraordinarymarriage.com so you can check out what others are saying before you uh, dig into it yourself. But we hope that you will so that you can participate with us over the next few weeks yeah. with this online small group that we are doing. Um, if you're new to our podcast, we always started off with talking about what's gone on over the past week and, uh, it's been a uneventful week. Relatively speaking. Yeah. You know, we were sitting yeah. here talking and we're like, what's happened this week? And, you know, we actually had to like, go, okay. We've been just sort of mellow, just hanging out. And I'm sure many of you know this time period in your, your marriage where you're just sort of going through and everything just seems to be flowing even after maybe a big blow up the week prior or whatever. And it's just sort of nice. I think, I think it's during these weeks and these times in our marriages where we just got to really just appreciate it and just be so thankful for what we have, Mm -hmm. you know, and just bank it up because you guys know there's always going to be something that comes around the corner for many of you who've been married for a short time or a long time. For those of you who've listened to our podcast, this is episode 34. You've heard, Elise and I get on this podcast and work through arguments. Mm -hmm. The most recent (laughs) one was with me with my phone. Oh, yes. And that that was a big one. And I know I keep talking about this one, but we really need to think about this. I I think as a generation, we need to really think about our phone use. It's it's interesting because in my day job, I... I'm the dent dude. I take dents out of cars, paintless dent repair, and I've been doing it for 13 years. So I come in into uh, interaction with a number of people. And it's really interesting the lively conversations I get to have with my clients. And I am not kidding you. Over this last week, almost every one of my clients, I've had either a conversation about the housing market or about the use of cell phones and smartphones and how it pertains to our marriages. Wow. I don't and, think you share that with me. And the the last one I had, which was on Friday night, really cool, really cool guy lives here in Poway. And we happened to just start talking about marriage and led into, well, talking about my work and how long I've been doing it, which led into the family and led into talking about the podcast and one and what we do and why we do it. And, and actually I was able to even talk to God about this couple to God or about God to this couple, uh, come to find out they're, they're Christians themselves. And, you know, we were just going over a myriad of stuff. And, and this is an, uh, an older couple, four kids, all of them are out of the house now. Mm. So they're empty nesters, but it's interesting. This guy's partner got served a couple months back and I, I was like, wow, what, what happened there? And he goes, oh, he goes, these dang phones, he goes, they're killing them. He goes, Mm. you know, we'll go to a lunch and he will be sitting on the phone for the 45 minutes out of an hour lunch. Wow. And so, you know, what he does when he walks into the house after a long day of work, what's he do? He's right on the phone, doesn't give his wife any bit of time. You know, all she's looking for is maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, maybe 
Right. Nothing you know, crazy. Just nothing crazy. Interact just with me. Interact with her. And it, it just, he didn't do it. And, you know, my client was just like, man, these, these darn phones, they just get in the way. And so I'm going to stop right there with phones because we've talked about it like the last three weeks and you guys are probably going Tony enough already. I just think it's interesting. The more and more I talk about it, the more and more people keep talking to me about it. So I notice that there is a correlation. There is something going on. Right. And so in our marriages, we need to be very cognizant about that. And I'm going to keep bringing it up to you guys. Keep it on the forefront. You know, if you're thinking about it, if you're conscious about it, then you're going to at least think. You know, that's our hope that if you, you know, kind of get the sense that you're spending too much time on your phone, go with that. You probably are. Yeah. Or if you're not sure, ask your spouse, you know, and, and be okay with the answer. If they say, yes, you are, would you please put the phone away? Um, or right. they might not say it as nicely as that, like <laughs> I did. Um, be understanding of that because they're giving you, they're communicating to you. Right. That where you are with your phone or your technology, whatever it is, whether it's Facebook or your phone or your computer, they're telling you that they're not getting right. you. That's right. So, so. at least I continuously working on that. So what mm-hmm. else happened this week? We, we took your grandmother out to lunch. We took Nunna Mary, my 87 year old grandmother to lunch on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And my, uh, my grandmother, she's getting down there in age. She, or up, up there up. in age <laughs> down there. she, <laughs> She's getting, what is she having? She's having a little, um, what what do they call that when loss of memory and all that? Yeah. I mean, she's just, she's showing the she's early signs. Uh, you know, she's 87. Yeah. You know? So we, we just make it a point to bring the kids up there mm-hmm. and hang out with her and just take her out to lunch and um, just be around because she is going to be moving into an active seniors living apartment, which will be about 20, 25 minutes away from my folks. Okay, you couldn't see that, but Tony just did quotes around active seniors. It's <laughs> the first time I've heard him describe it like that. And he's got the fingers going, which of course you can't see. So I, just, I had to share that with you. Fingers, active seniors. So it, it was just, it was cool. It, it was good to, to go see Nunna Mary and, uh, and hang out with her. And then we've just, we've spent the last week, um, I, I don't even really know how it got started, but we've also been playing a lot of board games with our kids. Yeah, we have been. And, I, I have, we've been playing oodles and oodles of shoots and ladders and Candyland and um, allowance, this game called allowance, which is a great way of, you know, having them count out money and, you know, you spend some, you lose, some, you earn some, you spend some. Anyway, um, we're looking for suggestions <laughs> from anyone out there on other good board games that you and your kids love. Keep in mind that our kids are, you know, seven and younger. Um, and so something that would be appropriate for either one or both of them would be great because um, I think Tony played about 12 games of shoots and ladders day on top of the five that I played. I did with them. It was, it was a shoots and ladder tournament with Tony and Alex who won. Did he win? Uh, He won. Yeah. I think he won at the end. Pulls it out. You know, it's really good when we, when we do that sort of stuff and Elise and I haven't been really doing that much but one of our big things is sort of just turning the tv off more and more with the kids because we know with with tv and electronics for them there's too much stimulation and then we get almost excessive crying and unbearable behavior and so i know as as tough it is as it is to just turn it off and have to be a parent we're we're trying to be parents (laughs) there there are still times when we just let the tv be the parent but well, we're trying and, you know, again, we all go through these waves and right now we're just in a wave where we're just sort of like turning it off because last week we just had, it just sort of all blew up and it, we can almost pinpoint it to electronic use and sugary consumption in our kids. And I, and I pretty much cut out their sugar. Yeah. that Well, that's another thing we just were doing this week. We, we launched, well, Dustin who many of you may know with Engaged Marriage and I launched Fit Marriage, our, our test group this week. So that started today. We have 16 couples doing that with us. Mm-hmm. And so Elise and I are actually doing that together. And Fit Marriage is about being active physically, like fitness active in a recreational 
intimacy with your spouse and doing something that the two of you can do together and to um, be able to just have fun, lose weight, tone up. And so we're working on that program. It's a 12 week program. It's in the test stages and hopefully if all goes well, that should be out by the first of the year mm-hmm. sometime, but it's cool. That, that's been really fun. And in the process, at least in our going through our nutrition again, right? which we've done Many, many evolutions of over the last 10 years. Oh, has it been that more? Long? We're well, getting old. Bef- before the PCT height. Before the PCT. So 2000. Oh, yeah. It has so been that's 10 to, years. it's probably 12 years. Well, yeah, it's probably longer because it was when we first started hiking. So that was like 97, mm. 98. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, so, long time. So Lisa and I've gone through a lot of fitness programs, a lot of nutritional highs and lows. Mm hmm. So, and we're just on another it's, one. It's one of those things, too, where. You know, when you can see the direct impact that sugars have on your children, <laughs> it makes you a little more motivated to cut them out. Even in us. Well, and I have to. I mean, it's right. for me, and we've talked about this um, on the podcast, is that I realize that I have a sugar intolerance, mm-hmm. um, probably borderline sugar allergy, um, but I definitely can't handle high quantities of sugar. Right. And so over the last two months, probably maybe yep. three now um, have really been working to eliminate massive quantities of sugar from my dad. And it's, you know, it's so cute now because we've got Alex trained yeah. to look at product labels, food labels to identify the amounts of sugar because he knows if anything's got crazy amounts of sugar, I'm not going to buy it. So like he doesn't even ask, he's like, hold on mom, I gotta look at the sugar. And if it's in this acceptable range, um, then he'll present it to me. But if it's not, then I'm like, sorry, dude, <laughs> doesn't make the cut. Um, and so that's very encouraging to see that happening. Now, of course the kid does not like vegetables, um, in most forms. And so a couple times a week we get the, ah, oh, that smells disgusting. I'm not eating that. And then his little sister, ever the people pleaser is like, Oh mommy, this is the best dinner you've ever made. And, yeah. yeah, well, and then she'll turn into tears and two minutes later and be in her room. So <laughs> Yeah, but at least she tells me the food's good. <laughs> we we all have our fun stories, don't we? Oh, yeah. We do. Oh, yeah. And I think part of marriage is just sitting down and reminiscing about them and just going, you know what? Even with all the tirades and all the crap, we still come at the end of the day and we smile and we have a good time. So... Very much so. I would I would say if you guys are in one of those times where you're just sort of like pulling your ha- hair out and just going, ah, I just can't stand my kids. Ah. <gasps> or you my know spouse. <laughs> or my spouse. Come on. You know, sit down and talk about it. Or, or you know, in the first chapter, uh, I'm going to kind of segue into the book uh, sure. now because we're, t- yeah. you know, we are kind of talking about chapter four. Uh, which is the third key, which is, you know, let's talk. It's mm-hmm. intellectual intimacy. It's it's getting past that, hey, honey, how was your day? And, you know, I tune you out the minute you open your mouth. It's, you know, it's sitting down. It's reminiscing, mm-hmm. you know, because a lot of times you start, you know, pulling up those funny things. Like, I mean, Tony, you know, we start talking about our nutrition and Tony and I have done some crazy, crazy things with meal plans and nutritional styles over the year. I mean, it got to the point where we were doing, I can't even remember what the name of the plan was, but which one? You, oh, <laughs> oh, what? Sorry, you're man. laughing. Which one? No, because I said, you said, I can't remember what, which one it is. And I'm like, which one? Yeah. Yeah. That's sorry. Good. Um, but Tony got so lean. I mean, his body fat was ridiculous that he turned into this monster. Grump. I mean, it was bad i was like who are you because he's a pretty happy go- i mean you guys know he's a pretty happy go lucky guy and right you know i just remember going there's something wrong here and we- well and what we learned from there is that when my percent body fat gets too low your brain needs so much fat to to function and i was just so lean at that time that i was just uh, it was bad news it was bad so you know we have those fun talks and, and we you know we reminisce and we talk about those things that were important to us in the past and how they've shaped our relationship. And and you, you have that laughter. Yeah. Laughter is really good for your marriage. Yeah. And you know, that's something that I think was lost in hours for a, for a while. Oh yeah. We've had our season. We were so strict and stringent with the kids and then that would, 
that would turn into us being strict with each other and there wasn't laughter and we've we've learned to just let go more and just mm-hmm. sort of okay you, you know what we need to put down on the show notes is we'll put up the video that we just did last week for marriage mm-hmm. minute monday which is called just 30 minutes and in this video elisa and i talk and it's more than a minute it's like three minutes sorry guys but elisa and i talk about you know taking 30 minutes a week maybe 10 minutes, three nights a week to pick up a devotional and we give you three options in there and and start reading them with each other. And I will have to say, Elisa and I, sometimes we do these videos because it's something that we need to do. And this is, this is one of those areas that Elisa and I have been talking about doing and we haven't. So really when we make a video and we put it out there for you guys, it's like, we're held accountable because now we want to go do it. And so this past week we, we picked up nightlight by the Dobsons for parents. And it's, it's a once a night topic Mm -hmm. or it's a weekly topic, but once a night, there's a, there's a devotional reading for every day. There you go. Thank you very much. (laughs) Each week has its own topic. And so Sunday through Saturday, the readings are on that topic. There you go. And so Elisa and I read out loud to each other. We switch each night. And then at the end, there's some questions. And we sit there and we answer the question as truthfully and honestly as we can. And some discussion gets brought up. And sometimes we're just like, nope, that that works for us. Or, you know, and we're on the same page. And other times a, a little bit more discussion will happen. And then after that's prayer. So let's add that to. I did. Okay. So you guys can see that that video. And if you don't, if you aren't signed up for our e-newsletter, that's what it is. It's a one, usually a one minute video. We were very ambitious when we kicked that off and we were doing it once a week as summer has hit. It's been down to two or one time a month. And hopefully once the kids go back to school next Wednesday, Ah. hallelujah, Elisa and I will have our one day a week morning where we Record those and yes, where we record stuff stuff. and do things like that. So we hope to get to get more than one, if not at least two a month out. So, you know, we're not spamming you guys. We're we're telling you about what's happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that, that devotional time, you know, it ties into this chapter on talking. Mm -hmm. It's a time for us, you know, as we're going through and, and, you know, this particular devotional deals with parenting and, And so it's a time for us to really kind of, you know, in relation to the kids, we get past the, well, Alex did this today or Abby did this. And, you know, we're not talking about the surface good things or bad things. It's like, you know, what's really going on with the kids? You know, what do you think about this that's happening with them or this, you know, in their future or the school year coming up? You know, what do we need to be praying for? And that's the same kind of conversation that you need to have in terms of your marriage. You know, you need to spend the time and this is definitely a time intimacy. I mean, you need to invest the time in truly communicating with your spouse, being able to take down those barriers, take down those walls and, you know, get into meaningful conversation. I'm not talking about, honey, can you pick up milk on the way home from work? That's not communication as it pertains to this chapter. Episode 31, we talked about the from the pure bed that questionnaire, that questionnaire. Mm-hmm. about sex and what you like and don't like right that is a perfect thing to pick up that is absolutely fantastic i was talking to a buddy this week who saw no i talked to him last week who saw that when i posted it up on twitter and he and his wife went through it and he even said he goes you know what there are some things on there that we felt really uncomfortable talking about and they've been married for many years and more than us. And he goes, you know what? The way I approached it was, honey, if you, if it, if you feel uncomfortable, that's okay. It's not that we have to do any of this. You know, because if you do pick this up, it does talk about... It just goes into detail. Okay. We'll leave it we'll at that. Because we that. don't want to have to put the explicit mark for this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so anyways, it goes into detail. And he was telling his wife, it's not that we have to do it, but it is good that I know and we're learning about each other after all these years. 
And so that, so episode 31 has that. If you haven't gone over it already, I would, at least, and I would suggest that you do. We did it. A uh, great piece of uh, material there, resource there for you guys. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's finding different tools. I mean, we have, do you still have the questions up on, um, in the resources section? Sure do. This, is it 77 questions? Sure do. Yeah. If you go into our resources tab, um, there are 77 questions to get the conversation started. I mean, those are great tools to use. You know, if you're in a, if you're in a situation, if you're in a point in your marriage where the conversation's not flowing so easily, check out those questions. You know, don't assume that you're going to sit down and go through all 77, but pick one or two Mm -hmm. and say, you know what? I just want to, you know, get back to getting to know one another, know what is going on in your, in your husband or wife's lives that, you know, is exciting. You know, what are they passionate about now? What are they scared about? What's going on that they're just uncertain about? You know, because if all you talk about is, you know, stuff in passing is you're, you know, <laughs> flying through the kitchen on your way out the door to pick the kids up from practice or to go here or to go there, sometimes those things that really matter just don't get discussed because there isn't time. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you if you say, you know what, three times a week, pencil it in on your calendar. <laughs> you know, if it's not getting done and you need to pencil it in on your calendar, do so. Right. There's nothing wrong with putting your spouse on your calendar. Right. And and it doesn't have to be crazy. I mean, it doesn't have to be these two hour long sessions. I, I would honestly, I would suggest 15, 20 minutes. Right. Really. I mean, there, there, it doesn't need to be these long drawn out conversations. Now, are there times when you need to do that? Sure thing. I mean, we all know that at least when I have conversations that, they're deep and it takes an hour, two hours to sort of get through all the little stuff and, and the big stuff. But I think if you're just at a point where you just want to start diving back into knowing who you guys really are, 15 minutes, 20 mm-hmm. minutes, take the time, right. make it, make it a priority, turn the damn TV off, you know, pick up, pick up the Bible, read it to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, I heard from a couple of couples in the last couple of weeks as well. You know, things are happening and they're not communicating anymore. He doesn't know what she's thinking. He does. She doesn't know what he's thinking. There's there's tension. The walls are up. The mask is on. And I'm going to tell you, you guys need to come together and just pray. It's going to be tough, but you got to pray for your spouse. We serve them. And to serve them means we need to pray for them and over them and for them and vice versa. Absolutely. And so I think that can really break it down. So you just bring it up before God and it's not just you and her just trying to bang it out and make it work. Mm -hmm. If we call ourselves Christians and we believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross for us, he can do a lot in your marriage. I think sometimes we just forget that and we want to take control and I'm, and I'll step up to the plate. I'm one of those dudes at times. So you guys know I'm telling you the truth when I when I fall and when I fail and when I try to take control. And I'm one of those guys who likes to try to take control. So uh, and I've and I've learned and and I'm just hopefully giving you something that will just will just trigger you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, you know, that talking piece, it, it's such a critical component actually have so many of these different keys um, and it goes directly into the very next one, which is money matters. It's chapter five in the book. And this is your financial intimacy. Mm -hmm. This is everything from, you know, how you spend your money, how you save your money.